Hello and welcome to my fourth lesson on matrices and transformations. Previously we looked at finding the matrix of a transformation, a single matrix for successive transformations. We looked at an inverse of a transformation. We also looked at area scale factor and determinant of a matrix. But in this today's lesson, I want us to look at uh, shear stretch isometric or nine asymmetric transformations. And so let's begin. Now, under shear stretch or isometric or non-isometric transformations, we're going to define what a shear and what a stretch is, and also what isometric and non-isometric transformations are. We begin with shear. Now, normally, a shear transformation is defined by two things. And what I mean by definition is, we, whenever a question has been given and you have performed the transformation, it turns out it's a shear, you must you'll be required to explain or def describe the transformation. You will therefore define a shear with these two things. The first one is an invariant line. Normally it's the X or the Y axis. Now, normally the matrix of transformation for a shear will either be like this one here, where we have one K zero one, where K is, is a number, and when it's that way, it'll be an x-axis invariant. So when you're defining that type of a transformation, you'll say that x-axis is invariant. Or, sorry, before we go to the other type of matrix, maybe I should show you an image of that. We have um, a triangle ABC that has been transformed to A prime, B prime, and C prime. Now B prime and C prime are the same thing, so I did not write them. Now the triangle ABC having been transformed to a prime b prime c prime has the line bc is invariant so you say in this case it's x axis invariant all right so obviously this type of uh, matrix that transformed this one would have had say one two zero one so that it is that particular transformation that changes abc to uh, the, the the image that you have there now the triangle the um, the image Sorry, the area for A, B, C is exactly the same as the area for A prime, B prime, C prime. If you find out the area of this, they are the same. And therefore, we would say area is normally invariant for shear transformations. Okay? So that's another way we can always identify that it's a shear. The area did not change. Now, the matrix can either be this way or this other way here. 1, 0, K, 1. Where K is a number and therefore when it's that way it's normally a y-axis invariant now an example of that would be this sort of transformation here we have the triangle the rectangle o a b c which has been transformed to o a prime b prime and c now notice that o and c are both the image in the object so i did not write them again therefore they are that way now in this case it looks like the y-axis is the one that is invariant why we have a line oc which was on the object and it did not change and that's why we say it's this time round y-axis invariant i hope that's clear therefore the first way we define a shear is by the invariant line normally either the x or the y-axis which is invariant when it's x-axis invariant normally the matrix of this is of this nature and k is a number or when it is the y-axis invariant, it's normally a matrix of this nature where k is a number. And I've shown you there. When we talk about an invariant line, it's a line in the object that did not change. All right? Or that did not change or remained the same way it was. So that's the first way we define a shear. We could also, we normally define also with this way. We normally say a point not on the invariant line, like not on OC in this case, and its image. For example, we mentioned that there's a point B which was moved from B to B prime, or you could say A which moved from A to A prime. Therefore, in this case, if I was doing this particular question and I was describing this particular transformation we have before us here, I would say uh, this is a shear with Y axis invariant with the point B moving to B prime or A moving to A prime. And of course, if they are coordinates, you should always give them. So please understand that for a shear matrix, you must explain those two things, the invariant line and the point that's not on that invariant line and its image. The next thing is a stretch. Now, in stretch, they are defined also by two things. All matrices that cause stretch on an object, they are defined by the following. The first one is an invariant line again, 
or the scale factor sorry not or and what i mean there is um, these two must be mentioned if you're given a question it turns out it's a stretch uh, transformation you must state the invariant line and the scale fact to give an example we have a triangle o a b c it has been transformed to be say o a prime b prime and c now what sort of transformation is this it's a stretch how it looks like it's just been stretched you know sideways like that all right where the invariant line in this case is o c there's a line the object which never changed and everything else changed perpendicular to that the line is o c that's the invariant line and again the scale the scale factor is a rate of increment i would say that so it is just o a prime divided by o a that is this distance divided by that distance o a prime divided by o a or you can say c b prime divided by c b that gives us the scale factor we must mention those two so that it's a stretch okay now this could also be in another way say if the triangle the rectangle sorry transforms to what you have there o a b prime c prime in this case the invariant line is o a you see o a did not change but everything else changed perpendicular to that and the scale factor in this case would be would have o c prime divided by o c you see the whole distance of the image divided by the distance of the object or if you like a b prime divided by a b and that's that's that that's how we define a stretch let's go to the last part now what i mean by isomerism is i mean whenever we are doing a transformation the transformation either can change or might not change the object so much all right so we normally have isometric transformations or non-isometric transformations isometric transformations are those that the size and the shape did not change non-isometric are the ones that changed let's begin with non-isometric -iso transformations sorry so isometric transformations are normally the ones where both the object and image are congruent congruence means similarity so they're similar the object and image they are similar all right let me mention this and this is really vital the size and the shape are the same the object and image they have the same size and shape not or and shape therefore that means whenever we have done a transformation it turns out that the object the image are same size and shape they are isometric if they are same size but not same sh shapes then maybe they are not if they are the same shape but not same size then also they are not con they are not isometric let's list the isometric transformations reflection now whenever we reflect an an object like this one we have here the image is just the same it's just that it's been overturned all right they are concurrent although we normally say it's indirect concurrence and therefore we say that this is isometric because the size of image and object are the same also the shape are the same so a reflection is a isometric transformation is an isometric transformation next one is a rotation if you rotated anything the shape of that thing would not change for example we have a triangle pqr changing to p prime q prime r prime the shape of this and the same this they're the same the sizes are also the same that means rotating an object is normally isometric they don't change all right the other thing is translation when we are translating an object to its image we're just changing its position all right and unlike the first two the orientation of the object did not even change this is really so much isometric an example of that is this one here the triangle abc has been translated to a prime b prime c prime now what we have there is um, a triangle which is very much similar only that the position has changed the size and shape they're all the same therefore we would say that a b c and a prime a prime uh, b prime c prime they are isometric therefore those three qualify to be isometric transformations reflection rotation and translation we go to the second part non-isometric transformations these are the ones whose size and shapes change with the transformation for example Oh, before we go to an example, I should say that both image and object are not congruent. That means they are not similar because the size and shape changed. Let's go to an example. Enlargement. Since we are talking about enlargement, it means making it bigger. 
That means the size isn't the same. That, tel that therefore tells us that that's a non-isometric transformation. An example of that is what we have here. We have a triangle PQR transformed to P prime, Q prime, R prime. The size of the image is bigger than this other one. It could have been diminished if the scale factor for enlargement was n was was um, fractional. So, and therefore the size and shape could be different. Sorry, the size in this case is different. Therefore, it's not isometric. Remember, I said for isometric transformations, the size and not or shape should be the same. So, enlargement is not an isometric transformation. It's non-isometric transformation. The next one is a shear. We've just looked at this, and I want to look at an example here. We have a triangle ABC, which has been transformed to A prime, B prime, C prime. The, this, the, the, the size could be the same, I don't know. Yeah, actually they're the same, because the area of ABC is the same as A prime, B prime, C prime, but the, 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 the shape, they're different. So this is not a tra is isometric transformation. Again, we look at a stretch. We have, say, a rectangle O, A, B, C, transformed to O, A prime, B prime, C prime. The shape surely has changed. Therefore, this is also not isometric. It's non-isometric transformation. 